In the previous video, we looked at a bunch of the sculpt tools, in particular the uh, the sculpt tool, the grab tool. Uh, we looked at the wax tool, knife, bulge, and the erase tool. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at some of these other sculpt tools, and we'll also look at how we can use stamps and stencils with them. Now, before I really get into some of those other tools, what I would like you to understand is that you can actually use stamps and stencils with the tools that we've already covered as well. And in fact, that might be the best way to introduce stamps is by going back to our standard sculpt tool here. Now, remember, when you're uh, using Mudbox, you need to up the resolution of your mesh, and you can simply do that by doing Shift-D a couple times. I'll go to perhaps level six, we'll, which will bring this sphere up to uh, over uh, 1,500,000 uh, faces. And the other thing to remember is to work with layers. So I'm going to create a layer for this example here. Notice that I created this layer, but it hasn't yet indicated what what uh, level I'm working on yet. Uh, once I actually do a stroke here, uh, it'll indicate that it's level six, and that is the, um, that's the layer, sorry, that's the level that this layer is going to now work with. Now, it looks like I've already made some changes to this brush. This is a, uh, this is the stamp spacing, which we've looked at earlier in a video. Uh, you know that depending on the distance, you can get either a smoother result or a, uh, a more uh, one that consists of these you know, intervals here, the spacing. Uh, if I want something smooth, I'll just return it back to a smaller number like one, and I get the smoother result. Uh, in fact, it's the stamp spacing that is going to be so useful with the stamps that we're going to be looking at now. And in fact, I forgot if I put my mouse on here, uh, it'll tell us what the stamp spacing does, so don't forget to utilize all the help features within Mudbox when learning the software. So we have our Sculpt brush activated, and what we're going to take a look at is using stamp images, and we'll look at these different settings for our stamps. Uh, primarily, we'll be looking at the stamp spacing as well as these randomizing functions for our stamp. Where will you find the stamps? Well, you can find them right here on the stamp tab, and you can see that there's a number of different stamps to uh, choose from. Uh, I'm going to select this one here because it has a very obvious direction to it, which will make it a little bit easier to uh, see what the effect is that these stamps have. So you can see the size of my brush. I currently have the this stamp activated, and if I do a brush stroke, I get this. This looks a bit, a bit messy. I think I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to decrease the strength of my brush using the M key, and I'll do another stroke. And here we go. This looks a little bit better. Now let's take a look at what we can do with these, uh, with these stamps. You'll remember we just looked at the stamp spacing. If I increase the stamp spacing to 100, I get this. You can see that uh, it leaves gaps between uh, these stamp images. If I wanted that to be even more, I could manually type in uh, a value of 200 perhaps to illustrate this a little better. If I don't want to use the stamp, I could just uncheck Use Stamp Image, and now it's back to being a regular stroke, still with the stamp spacing, however. I think I'll increase the, the strength of this a little bit using the M key. There we go, so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to reactivate the stamp image here so that we can take a look at the randomizing features of this. I'll 
activate randomize and we'll take a look at these different features. Remember I have the uh, stamp selected and notice that they're all oriented in the same direction. They all orient along my brush stroke here. However, if I adjust the rotation of the stamp here and then I do a stroke, you'll notice that it actually randomizes the orientation. I'm going to bring that back down and we'll take a look at this feature here, which will, if we activate that, it's going to adjust the placement of the stamp on either side of my stroke. So you'll see that it adds a randomization of it instead of uh, a straight line here. Uh, it randomizes it along uh, along my stroke, either to the left or to the right of it. I'll bring that back to uh, zero, and I'll do the same for its vertical placement, or rather, uh, well, along my stroke here, you'll see that it'll leave some areas that have larger gaps and other areas that have smaller gaps, another way of randomizing. We can also randomize the scale of the stamp here. so that some of the stamps are large, some of them are small. And finally, we can also randomize the strength here. Perhaps to illustrate this a little better, I'm going to increase the strength of my brush. And you'll see, it's subtle, but you'll see that some of the, uh, some of the brushes are, some of the stamps are a little bit uh, less pronounced than other ones, like this one here. So these are ways that you can really create very effective uh, brushes using stamps. Now, perhaps uh, this stamp isn't the most interesting of, of stamps, although it can be a quite useful one, uh, but you can see that you have a lot of different stamps to select from, to choose from, uh, and they will give you different effects. This is a very nice uh, a very nice stamp here that I currently have selected. Um, let me make my brush a little bigger perhaps. And you can see what that does. Uh, currently I have, of course, a large distance with the, st uh, the spacing, but if I decrease that, I can get a nice effect. Uh, again, maybe I want to randomize these different properties of it to get a little bit more variation in it. Uh, but this is a very effective way of really giving your models a very kind of textural uh, feel to them. So we've taken a look at stamps and how you can actually use them with pretty much any of these tools down here, including the erase tool, uh, as well as the other tools that we've looked at up to this point, like the wax tool uh, and, and so on. Uh, but some of, the, some of the tools here are specifically created uh, with the purpose of using a stamp or stencil. And we'll take a look at some of those tools now. So the three tools that come to mind that use specifically, uh, that are created specifically for using the stamps would be the spray tool, the repeat tool, and the imprint tool. Now the spray tool and the repeat tool are actually very similar to using the sculpt tool, but setting these, these different parameters for randomizing the stamp. Uh, but let's take a look at them. So I will select the spray tool. The spray tool should be used with a stamp. It sprays the stamp imprint randomly along your stroke. So if I select that and we can pick a stamp here, uh, pick a, this one is, this one's kind of a nice one here. And you can see what it does. I'll bring the strength down a little get this nice kind of textural quality here. We can try some of these other stamps with it as well. 
And of course, you can also adjust uh, these different parameters like the stamp spacing for a different effect. The repeat tool is uh, very similar, but without all that randomization happening. And we'll pick another, maybe we'll pick the same one that we're looking at with, uh, with the spray tool, the repeat. Perhaps again, I'll bring the strength down and increase the spacing so we can see a little more what it's doing. Uh, this one's an uh, interesting one because if we put our mouse on it, uh, it'll explain that it should be used with a stamp. Use it to stroke patterns onto your model. For example, rivets on the wing of an airplane, zippers, stitching, etc. The stamp will follow the direction of the stroke. Again, these are all settings that you could apply to this simple sculpt tool uh, simply by setting these different um, you know, properties here. Uh, but this is just a quick and easy way to get there if you don't need to have that randomization happening and you just want it to follow along with the brush stroke. Uh, and then finally, the imprint tool here. The imprint tool, uh, it says we'll uh, stamp the image, press, drag, and release to imprint one copy of the stamp at a specific location, size, and orientation. I find this one very, very useful. If I want uh, things to remain, uh, if I want these stamps to really pop out and for you to really see the detail in them, uh, let's pick one that would work well for this. We'll pick the, this leaf pattern here. And what you do is use your mouse, your left mouse button and still using the repeat tool. I was wondering why it wasn't working properly. Uh, I meant to show you the imprint tool. Use your left mouse button, drag, and you can rotate it however you want the placement. And then when you have it just like you want it, release, and you'll get this effect here. Now, I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to make the strength of this lower and if you remember we wanted to try out the uh, leaf stamp instead so I'll activate that um, drag it place it how we want release very effective way of using these stamps down here so I think that'll just about do it for uh, these three tools, the spray, repeat, and imprint tool, uh, as well as for stamps. Remember that you can use stamps with any of these tools, however, uh, including the erase tool. That could be an interesting effect that you might desire. Uh, and in the next video, we'll take a look at uh, a few more tools, and we'll take a look at the stencils. So see you next time.